the question on everyone's lips. What are Australian house prices going to do in 2022? Well, I'm Biko Constantinos, and that's what we're going to talk about today. My mission is to provide you with quality financial information and education. If you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing to my channel as I'll be covering a broad range of financial topics and breaking market analysis. Let's start off by looking at what happened in 2021. Looking at the annual rise up until December 31st, 2021, we can see from the annual returns that Sydney rose 25%, Melbourne 15%, Brisbane 27%, Adelaide 23%, Perth 13%, Hobart 28%, Darwin 14% and Canberra 25%. There's some very large differences in those figures. The standouts seem to be Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, Hobart and Canberra. And the ones that have seen considerably lower rises are Melbourne, Perth and Darwin. If we look at the median value of house prices across the different capital cities, we've got Sydney being the most expensive, and that's followed by Canberra, which is then followed by Melbourne. We've got Hobart and Brisbane relatively the same, then Adelaide, Perth, and lastly Darwin having the lowest median value out of the capital cities. To see how house prices are gonna go at the start of 2022, it's good to see how they were at the end of 2021. So if we have a look, in December 2021, Australia's median price rose by 1% to 709, and that's combined across Australia. Sydney had a small increase by 0.3, while prices in Melbourne fell by 0.1% in December. Brisbane and some other capital cities did very strongly in December, which makes up that 1% average across Australia. Sydney and Melbourne are considered some of the leaders when it comes to real estate in Australia. So as Sydney and Melbourne failed to really rise in December, it could be an early signal that house prices are starting to slow. However, one month's not really enough data to give us full confidence that the market is slowing for sure. If we were to see three months where Sydney and Melbourne didn't really have any growth in real estate prices, then that would be a very clear indication that the market is slowing and may have reached its peak. And if that happens, it will probably be translated across the other capital cities as Sydney and Melbourne tend to lead and then some months later, the other capital cities follow suit. So what could be the reason why Sydney and Melbourne saw nil growth in December? According to this ABC article, there was a, a surge in advertised listings through December. Other factors could include affordability constraints, especially for first home buyers as the prices have now gotten out of control and out of their reach. As we can see by these figures in this article, the prices in Brisbane and Adelaide in December went up 2.9 and 2.6%, which are very strong gains. That could mean that come January, February, those two capital cities could still be quite strong as the demand might be overpowering the current supply in those capital cities. However, it'll be critical to watch Sydney and Melbourne because as we said, they're often a leader and the other capital cities will most likely follow what they do. Now, according to this article, regional areas have even risen higher than capital cities in 2021. So even though regional areas are cheaper in relation to their median price, their percentage increase has even outdone the capital cities across Australia. Now, according to AMP Chief Economist Shane Oliver, storm clouds are gathering for the property boom. He expects further slowing in the national home price gains ahead of a peak and then price falls from later this year and in 2023. I would personally probably agree with that sentiment. I think there's still quite a bit of momentum, so prices will probably rise somewhat this year, especially in the early stages, but then many factors could most likely contribute to some smaller declines in later 2022 and 2023. The reasons Mr. Oliver has given for the potential ending of this property boom include poor affordability, 
rising mortgage rates and higher interest rate buffers in Australia, COVID impacts and interest rates. According to Mr. Oliver, the 25 year bull market in capital city prices is likely to come under pressure in the years ahead as the 30 year decline in mortgage rates is now likely over. So for 30 years, mortgage rates have declined in Australia. This is most likely the biggest contributing factor to the massive boom that Australia has seen and interest rates being at all time lows has potentially taken real estate across Australia into bubble like territory. So if the era of declining mortgage interest rates is over, that could put the property market in a very different scenario over the next several years. It just depends how quickly they might rise as to how much impact this could have. A number of countries across the world have already risen their interest rate, including the UK and New Zealand. The markets are currently predicting in the US that interest rates will rise three times in 2022. Now the Reserve Bank in Australia has been extremely dovish regarding interest rates and originally promised that they wouldn't even rise until at least 2024. In my opinion, that was a very irresponsible promise to make as I think it's led to an invitation to really just over leverage because people will know that their interest rate repayments will remain extremely low. They've now reduced it from 2024 to maybe 2023. However, I still don't think they should be trying to make any date promises regarding interest rates as I personally believe that's quite irresponsible. So regarding interest rates across Australia, I don't think they're gonna rise anytime soon. However, the RBA might be forced to just raise them even when they don't want to. So we'll have to just wait and see what happens in that area. So considering we've had two years of massive real estate growth across Australia, it's hard to think that this will be repeated in 2022. Of course, anything's possible, but I'm leaning towards Shane Oliver's assessment that we might see some small gains followed by some falls in 2022. I'd love to know what you think. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below as to whether you think the market's going to be up, flat or down in 2022. I'm Biko Konstantinos and I really appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe if you like my content and I will catch you next time.